Welcome to AI for Good, the leading action-oriented, global and inclusive United Nations platform on AI. Organized by ITU, in partnership with 40 UN sister organizations, and co-convened with Switzerland. The goal of AI for Good is to identify practical applications of AI to advance the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and scale those solutions for global impact. In today's session, we're counting on you to use the live video wall feature to ask questions and post comments to help create an engaging discussion. We encourage you to stay until the end to chat, connect, ask questions, and network with our distinguished panelists and world-class AI experts in the neural network. It is now time to kick off the session and welcome our first speaker. The floor is yours. Hello and welcome all to today's session. My name is Andrea Manara from the ITU, the International Te Telecommunication Union. It is an honor for me to introduce this first finale event for the 2022 GAI Challenge. You may know that ITU has been hosting a successful machine learning and 5G competitions for a few years already. This year, we decided to launch the GOI Challenge alongside the GOI Discovery Webinar Series, which uh, uh, provides a forum for leading voices in the fields of geospatial and AI across various sectors to describe latest research and real application of GOI to meet the sustainable development goals. We discussed uh, several topics like uh, digital twins, uh, agriculture, climate, health, ecology, ethics, and we held also a few workshops uh, on analysis deforestation with machine learning and Google, and Google Earth Engine. The recordings of all GOI webinars are available, are available on YouTube and on the neural networks to which you are connected right now. The ITU GOI competition aims to provide a platform for collaboratively addressing the real world's geospatial problems by applying in artificial intelligence machine learning to advance the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDG. Participation is open to any individual from one of the 193 member states of the ITU. ITU also provides a state of the art free of charge compute platform to participants of the challenge who do not have adequate access to compute in their respective institutions. Within the ITU GI competition, the goal of the location mention recognition from social media crisis related text problem statement is to encourage the development of system for location mention recognition from microblogs during emergency. These automatic systems are anticipated to support the relief activities that are executed by response authorities during disasters. I'd like to mention a few words about IT-related activities related to disaster and early warning systems. On March 22, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres announced that the United Nations will lead the new action to ensure every person on Earth is protected by an early warning system within five years. With a newly defined action plan at COP27, the ITU took the lead on warning dissemination of communication, aligned the use of multi-channel dissemination alerting, including implementation of geolocated mobile early warning services using cell broadcast and or location-based SMS. One of the activities also included the leveraging of artificial intelligence to scale the dissemination of actionable alerts. Now, I really wish to thank the host of this problem uh, statement, the Qatar Computing Research Institute and the Qatar University and QN Labs Inc. Um, I, before giving the floor to Rimali, I would like to invite uh, my colleague uh, uh, Tomas to give uh, a few uh, information about also another competition which was organized last weekend. Uh, thank you very much, Andrea, for giving me the opportunity to speak a little bit about another angle we took in this challenge. So as we are trying to engage more participation from different stakeholders, uh, we were lucky that uh, last week, 
uh, it's not long time, last week we were invited by our colleagues in Tanzania to host a challenge related to transformers uh, in the Indaba X. So Indaba X is uh, one of the machine learning uh, projects uh, that is happening in Africa in different countries. So this was specific for Tanzania. And we had about four days for the teams to crack this challenge. So this specific problem statement. Unfortunately, we have one team uh, from the Indaba X in Tanzania presenting today as well in this uh, competition. So let's look forward to see what this team managed to put up in four days. So thank you very much. And I'll give the floor back to you, Andrea. I thank you very much. And now I will invite to the floor Reem Ali. Reem is a PhD student at Qatar University, Doha. Her PhD work focus on time critical location mention prediction for social good. Since 2015, she has been very active in formation retrieval research with the main uh, focus on social media applications. Rim, I'm, I'm sure that you are having uh, uh, in this period a lot of fun with the soccer World Cup. I yeah. just would like to, to start by asking you why you didn't invite Italy to participate this year because they would have enjoyed uh, much more. <laughs> Aside for maybe for the they joking. didn't make it. <laughs> Perhaps because they didn't make it, but of course yes, you're invited course. and you're welcome to, to come here and of enjoy. Of course, it. I was joking. <laughs> okay, so I let you go. Do you see my screen? Oh, Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you much. So yes, I'm here uh, today to uh, introduce this task again, and then we will give the floor to the participant. But I'm here first on behalf of the hosts. Uh, our team includes Dr. Hamad Imran, Dr. Ihsan Allah, and Dr. Ferda from Qatar Computing Research Institute, Lokandra from uh, the founder of the Quinn Labs, and Dr. Tamar Said and myself from Qatar University. So before we jump in and talk about the teams and submission and let the participants discuss uh, their solutions and their efforts, let's motivate the importance of this task uh, for the responders. So to understand why we're doing or why we're running this task, uh, we need to understand why social media is important. And to do so, as you can see here, there are some tweets that are shared during Shinai floods that happened in 2016. As you can see here, uh, these different tweets share different uh, information like uh, reporting incidents, uh, close, uh, closed roads or a uh, bridge uh, that is flooded. Others report the availability of shelters. So people in need who got uh, home, their homes destroyed, they can use these shelters. Uh, someone uh, is reporting or requesting help from other people to send a boat for a specific uh, place in Chennai. And someone is uh, offering to recharge uh, the people in the affected area, which is Chennai, uh, to recharge their uh, mobile credit. So people uh, affected, uh, they can stay uh, uh, and connect with each other and they can uh, request help or offer help to other people. So all of these tweets report information that is important for the affected people, and they are also important for the response authorities. And in all of these tweets, as you can see, uh, we put uh, a red box around the locations people report, and these locations could be a high level locations, what we call the coarse uh, grained locations. And in some tweets like the tweet at the bottom, uh, there are fine grained locations, which are uh, street numbers and street names, uh, or the full address of the affected or the, the location of the incident where the help is needed. So given all of this valuable information, we can extract this information and uh, help the responders to manage the emergency or to make actions. So what kind of locations that are needed by responders? There are two categories that I already mentioned them, the coarse grained locations like the countries, the states that are important 
to uh, draw high level overview of the uh, ongoing uh, disaster event. And they are helpful to, uh, to assess the impact as well. To see an example for why we can or how we can use these locations, you can see here a map was generated after the floods happened in Sudan. Uh, the map shows the density of the effect uh, uh, of the floods uh, uh, on the level of the state. So you can see the number of affected people, the number of houses damaged, and the uh, number of homes that were destroyed. The fine grained locations like streets, buildings, and points of interest are also important to, uh, for responders to provide detailed re reports for uh, the responders and to uh, make activities or make actions to help people uh, where incidents are happening. And they are also important to locate resources or indicate the locations where there is lack of resources like water or shelters or whatever uh, useful resources for the affected people. This is an example of a map was generated after the earthquake happened in Nepal. And uh, the map shows uh, the damaged roads and the locations of uh, landslides and the uh, heavy rains uh, uh, locations. So this way we can use the fine grained locations. So using uh, the social media and uh, knowing the importance of, you, of extracting the important uh, uh, information uh, with uh, the locations from social media, we define our problem uh, to uh, extract the location spans uh, that are mentioned within the text of uh, the tweets uh, using uh, models, uh, machine learning models or uh, deep learning based models. And the output of these location mention recognition models would be locations of uh, different granularity. Uh, so this uh, tweet contains uh, a district uh, in Kerala floods. Another tweet contains um, finer grain uh, locations like uh, barkways or roads and avenues. And the models are expected to extract all types of locations. So to do the evaluation, we have provided the Adresi dataset. Uh, the Adresi dataset is large uh, dataset uh, that contains around 20,500 uh, English tweets uh, that were gathered or sampled from different uh, disaster events happened between 2016 and 2019. Uh, it contains 19 disaster events of different types, including hurricanes, uh, earthquake, floods, uh, wildfires, and cyclone. Uh, the, the disaster uh, uh, or this data set was sampled from a larger uh, data set uh, that was uh, labeled for informativeness or the humanitarian categories. Uh, so it contains, the data set contains an important uh, reports and information for uh, the response authorities. Uh, the disaster events uh, in this data set happened in more than 14 countries, United States, countries in Europe, countries in Asia and Africa. So it covers a large number of uh, countries. We annotated the data set uh, and asked the annotators uh, to extract the location mentions and assign them uh, some uh, uh, location types, coarse grained or fine grained, including countries, uh, including uh, uh, points of interest, buildings, streets, and other types. So for every event in this uh, data set, we uh, split it into standard, uh, standard uh, splits. 70% for training, 10% for uh, development. And we released this data set for the participants. And we kept 20% for test for fair ev evaluation. We kept it uh, private. We didn't share it with participants. We used three uh, evaluation measures, precision, recall, and F1 score. The main uh, measure that we used for ranking the teams was the harmonic mean, which is F1 score. Other considerations that we used for evaluating the team is that we average the, team, the, the model's uh, performance per event 
then we report the overall performance of the submission uh, and average uh, all uh, the uh, scores for all teams. Uh, we only consider the exact matches. So if there are partial matches with our gold standards, our annotation, we just ignore them and don't evaluate them. And one uh, more important point uh, about our evaluation strategy is that there are some tweets that don't contain any location mention. If the system uh, managed to keep silent and don't uh, predict any location mention, we reward it, uh, we give it a full score of one. Uh, but if it uh, predicted any location mention for this uh, set of tweets, we, we give it a score of zero. So this is our evaluation uh, framework for the participants. And to help them, we also provided them with two base baselines. The first one is BERT based, which is a transformer uh, model. Uh, we made it available for the teams to use and to improve. We also provided conditional random field based uh, uh, baseline for the teams, and we will show their results later after the teams uh, present their solutions. This is one of the competitive uh, models for the NER task. So that's it from my side. Now I'll keep the floor for the participants to present. I think Andrea will manage. Uh, I thank you very much, Arim. So I will invite now the first team to speak, the Tetistex Mining. If you can, um, okay, yes. Good afternoon. Thank you very much thank by you. me. So we are looking forward to your uh, <laughs> screen, presentation. Let me screen. Thank you. Okay. Do you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so first of all, I would like to uh, thank you for um, organizing the, the event. And we would like uh, as well to thank the University of Qatar to, for sharing with us the, the, the data. We, we really enjoyed the, the, the challenge. Uh, so we both work for uh, a French laboratory the name is uh, TETIS, it's a joint research unit uh, dedicated to the special information, uh, such as uh, remote sensing. And uh, we have uh, several uh, employers and they are all um, French national research institution dedicated to agriculture. So my colleague and me, uh, we work uh, for uh, INRE and CIRAD. So I am Remy, and I worked with uh, Nejat and Roberto. So our motiva motivation um, to be part of the challenge uh, was that uh, we worked on uh, connect the topic. Uh, actually, we, we applied text mining uh, method, uh, natural language processing method, um, to um, two issues. Uh, the first one is uh, epidemiology. in um, um, animal health, and we try to do some early detection of disease and disease spreading. And the second one is the food security. Um, and our methods are um, graph-based analysis and text classification. And uh, in the past, we have already used the Porter University data. We used the crisis NLP to train our model and to evaluate our model as well. So the methodology now. So at the beginning, at the beginning of the of the challenge, we we had three hypotheses. The first one was that we could reuse uh, retrain um, models from the the hub hugging face. Um, we thought that we can reuse a name entity recognition um, model and uh, fine tune a bit the model. The second assumption was uh, we should use OpenStreetMap data to improve the, the result. And the last one uh, was um, we wanted to use some data augmentation techniques to enlarge the training data set. But the reality is not like the theory. And among all the uh, models that we use, uh, the best one was uh, a generic one, was uh, Roberta Bayes. 
which is trained on a big corpus, but is not uh, specialized on crises. And um, his observation was later confirmed by, um, by a paper from the IBM uh, uh, research. So the best models are often the, the, the model that are the biggest corpus. And yeah, that was good to know. Um, then we uh, gave up on the idea of using OpenStreetMap because when we analyzed our results, we saw that the, um, the kind of location that were that we were missing was not uh, the simplest one. They were not uh, city or state or countries. They were more complicated, such as uh, island or natural point of interest. And the using of uh, OpenStreetMap data would be much harder and would be much time consuming as well. So we gave up on the idea of using a gazetteer like uh, OpenStreetMap. And at the end, uh, in our lab, we are um, creating some data augmentation techniques for text classification, and they usually work pretty good, uh, uh, pretty fine. But in this task, uh, on this data, it uh, introduced too much noise. So we gave up on the idea of using data augmentation method as well. So here, uh, this is our uh, pipeline. It is um, um, divided into two steps. The first one is the, the training of our model. So as I said, we, we train um, uh, several models and we fight in them um, with uh, parameters, with different parameters, and we apply uh, different data augmentation. And at the end of the first step, we extract the, the best model, uh, uh, which was uh, Roberta Bayes, fine-tuned. And then we use it on the second uh, step, uh, which is the, the prediction step. So we took our uh, uh, model and used the unknown evaluation data to make the prediction. And then we apply some post-processing step in order to be compliant with the challenge rules. For the implementation detail, details, we use a Python with the library from Hugging Face, which is called Transformers as well. And as I said, we used um, Roberta Bayes and we fine tuned the uh, Roberta Bayes with no pre-processing of the data. We took the data um, like uh, the Qatar University provided for the evaluation. Uh, so as I said, we took the, the data from uh, the repository of uh, Rimali and we took uh, the file uh, called BILU. And BILU stands for um, uh, beginning inside last init or out um, token. Um, for example, if I give a, an illustration, if we are talking about the, the country Democratic uh, Republic of the Congo, Democratic will be uh, tagged with the B because it's the beginning of the location. Congo will be the will be tagged with the L for last, and the other uh, word will be tagged with uh, I for inside. And then we uh, we had um, twelve um, look, type of location, um, such as country, cities, states, and so on. And uh, this is what we call the tip full. Uh, and in opposite, we we use as well a tip less. Uh, so only uh, one um, tagging, which is say which says uh, if it's a location or not. For um, tuning the model, we mainly focused on three parameters. Uh, the first one uh, was the learning rate. The second one was the batch size. And the last one was the, the number of epoch. And we, um, we loaded the best model. Um, for Roberta Bates, it was um, sometimes the second epoch and sometimes the sixth epoch. Um, and then we compare the results. Uh, we apply the baseline um, provided by Rimali. Uh, the first one was BERT and the second one was CRF. And we applied on, our, on the test data set. And as you can see, uh, our uh, method were uh, better for tipful and uh, it has a similar uh, result for the tipless. And then uh, we Compile the result uh, as provided by uh, the University of 
quota uh, of Qatar, sorry. And uh, it appears that all the methods have better results and the baseline was very, very strong. And that's why we have a question to ask to the organizers. Um, we were wondering if the, the model were uh, trained on each event separately. Uh, there are still a room of improvement. And I think we had two, uh, we have two um, ways to improve our method. The first one is to focus on the type of location uh, for, uh, because for them, we had bad results, for example, for um, natural po point of interest or uh, health point of interest, we had very low results. So I think we should uh, focus on this uh, type of location and understand why they are so low. And we have to do the same with the event uh, for which we have such bad results, such as Canada and Hurricane. So we have to read the data, analyze the data, and try to understand why uh, the model performs so badly. As a takeaway message is, um, we would like to remind that it's very important to use um, a machine learning uh, tracking tool such as uh, MLflow. We didn't do it at the beginning and th that, was a, that was a mistake, yeah. And then uh, as usually, uh, we, a good practice is to read the data. And I think it's very important. And then we would like to say that our model is uh, um, accessible. It um, um, could be downloaded from the Hugging Face uh, Hub. So, don't hesitate to um, to download our model and to use it. We will be very happy. So that's all for me. Thank you. I thank you very much, uh, Remy, and I, I thank uh, all all of your colleagues in the Tetis Tech Mining teams for this uh, excellent work. Uh, I would I would invite uh, now. Uh, the Patterns team, I think that it would be Pratamesh to uh, describe uh, the work from the Patterns team. I thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you, Andreas. Uh, I'm Pratamesh. Uh, I'll, I'll start this screen share. Oh, so yeah, hello all, I'm Prathamesh. Um, I'm Prathamesh Kulkarni. I'm currently pursuing my uh, master's in business analytics and data science at Spear School of Business, Oklahoma State University. And my team patterns com comprises of all of the second year students from the from my band's program. Uh, uh, it's me, Saswat, Norwin, Tejasvi, and Bekha. Uh, going further, just a li little bit about ourselves. Uh, we are we are team patterns. Uh, we are current uh, ML enthusiast, second year students of Oklahoma State University, and we have keen interest in NLP and text analytics. We do take part in different NLP competition and NLU competitions. Uh, our mission statement would be using machine learning to solve real world problems and to make Earth a better place to live. Uh, just like what are the different agendas that we have? We have the introduction, the methodology that we followed, the evaluation metrics and the uh, evaluation methods, and some takeaway messages for, for the improvement of the model. Uh, starting with the methodology, uh, our entire problem or the entire approach towards the uh, like LMR problem was basically to design a novel method or novel machine learning method, which would be then used by some disaster, by some government entities uh, directly in the, in the entire process. Uh, where the data would be directly fetched from the APIs of Twitter and uh, the model would directly give them a location. So our entire approach was to extract a location rather than going to us uh, having a specific type of location like state, and, uh, state, country or county, uh, that, that's what was our flow. So starting forward, uh, uh we started, uh, we started to download, uh, we started by cloning the repository of the literacy, uh, the data. Uh, we spent a lot of time on understanding the data, the, the context of the data and the semantic information it holds. So the data was uh, in the colon format. Uh, it was it was tagged as B-I-L-O-U. Uh, further, 
as we had uh, different approaches on training the model and trying to analyze the parameter we uh, the one of the main conclusion that we came uh, for was rather than rather than having different types of uh, location entities such as country state and uh, county a single tag uh, for all of the location would make more sense and the data and the loss function of the models would better uh, have uh, would have a better time, would have a better uh, uh, better metrics in calculating so we try to replace all of the different tags such as county state in the training data set with a single tag called location or loc uh, also as we were trying to explore different models from the high interface like roberta and diberta uh, Debata version three, as well as the bird, the, the slim bird. Uh, uh, one thing that we came to understand is the Debata version three model from that has been recently uh, released by Microsoft. Uh, really re uh, requires the NER, uh, the data in the form of BIOES rather than BILOU. So that was the second thing that we tried to change in the in the like the labeling of the data. Uh, further going, we use we didn't add some uh, like uh, some we didn't do any kind of data augmentation or some adding new data. Uh, we had we tried to add some new data, but uh, due to the increased noise in the data, there was a lot of misclassification, which eventually led to decrease in the F1 score and the performance metrics. So our entire model has been just been trained on the IDRC data set with no other data. Uh, uh, just explaining the the main model would be the Debata version three. We uh, we uh, directly took it from the hugging phase, and we further tried it to fine tune on the IPC data set. Uh, one of the different thing that we tried to do with the uh, Debata model is that we use the Flare uh, framework from the hugging phase, which is pretty e easy to use and has a kind and provides the user with a kind of open architecture capability. Uh, one of the different things that we did uh, try uh, for the Flare framework was we tried to add a reprojection linear way on the output. So basically, whatever the uh, sentence embedding that was generated from the model, we further uh, tried to fine tune uh, using a linear layer uh, that uh, that even like if there was a slightest uh, uh, slightest uh, uh, chance of a better understanding the sentence using uh, the uh, pre like fine tune embeddings, the linear layer uh, would do the task. Uh, and the output, as we can see, uh, is uh, it gives a like uh, uh, it helps us to understand the location from the text as well as the span tag. So as we can see, like George Washington went to Washington. We here, here uh, the Washington that uh, the word Washington that August first is actually associated with a person's name, while uh, went to Washington is actually location. So adding the reprojection layer for the in the flare framework really helped us a lot. Uh, some of the hypotheses and uh, assumption that we that we understood were our main hypothesis was like the transfer learning can better help to understand uh, uh, to tackle the challenge of any other task in NLP. Our main assumption was fine tuning uh, fine tuning a pretend model from hugging face, which has been trained on a bigger corpus, would better perform in understanding the context of a given sentence. Uh, one of the different methods that we tried to do was we tried to use the flare framework from hugging this, which is which is said to be state of the art and really provides uh, the capability of user to uh, change the architecture of the model as per his own needs. Uh, uh, evaluation, uh, starting with the evaluations, the programming language has been Python and we have used extensively, we have used uh, Colab for the GPU resources. Uh, Pre-processing uh, uh, the, pre uh, the data, we tried to uh, the the same steps. We tried to uh, uh, clone the repo of the IDRC. Uh, we tried to change the tagging from below to BIOES. Uh, multiple uh, tags such as state, county were changed to LOC. So basically, we tried to tackle the problem as a typeless problem. Uh, the further going to the uh, actual architecture of a model, the LMR model. Uh, we have we have extensively our entire code is based on the Flare framework. Uh, we have used a debugger uh, that has been pre on onto nodes five. So just uh, expanding on the onto nodes five is a is, is is said to be one of the uh, is said to be one of the most cohesive and uh, one of the most updated data set for the NER task. It has around fifty six thousands of different sentences uh, for uh, for the like for the training and for the uh, for the test. It has around uh, fourteen thousand. So it has a very comprehensive. Uh, so the, the Debata version three has been trained on a huge corpus. 
uh, which helps it to uh, better understand the contextual meaning of the sentences. Uh, we tried to change the architect by adding a linear layer for reprojecting the embeddings to better fine tune our models, even if like a slight chance of, of understanding the positional uh, positional information was there, it could better understand. Uh, we also added a linear layer for feature detection. Uh, finally, we tried to optimize the loss function by using weights. So as we have uh, we have five different classes for the labels like B, I, O, E, S associated with the location uh, label. Uh, we tried to calculate the occurrences of each of these tags, and then we tried to optimize the loss function. Uh, of the shell adopted tools would be the flare framework, which was on the uh, on the hugging face. Uh, yeah, going further, uh, the evaluation, uh, the training and development, the pre-train uh, embeddings, uh, the pre-train uh, model were used from the debugger that, that was uh, trained on the onto node five. The input data schema, the data was in infancy. Uh, the data formats were further changed from below to BIOES. A single label LOC was used for all of the location. The training data was around 14,392. And the validation data was around 2056. So no other data has been used for this current model and the current score that we'll see further. Uh, the some of the model fine-tuning parameters that we have used are the learning rate. We tried to change the learning rate from uh, uh five from 0 0.005 to 0 0.0008, but due to the computational uh, expenses, we couldn't do it further. Uh, we tried to use uh, the reprojection of the embeddings. Uh, which further, uh, which basically added a linear layer for the sentence embeddings. The mini batch size was also tried to vary from five to seven, but seven was the max limit that we could achieve on the on the compute that we had. We also tried to change the epochs from two uh, all the way up to five, but five was the upper cap. But generally, for all, all of our different models or the iteration that we tried, the third epoch gave us the best result after which the model tried to overfit the data. So uh, the fine tuning of the, of the current model would be at the epoch three. Optimizer would be the AdMW. Uh, weight DK has been given at 0 .0, 0 0.0, which is a float. And the, uh, and the hidden state would be 768 because the original debugger version three, uh, version two had a, three, a 768 hidden state. Version three has 1024, but uh, our current model gave a better result at 768, so we tried to stick to the same parameters. Uh, just going for the uh, up model, uh, the, the comparison of the results of a model with the board baseline, as well as the CRF, uh, which was provided by the IDVC. Uh, on all of the different data sets, we can see that uh, uh, the F1 score of the, of the flare debugger model can be said uh, in, is in comparison with the board uh, baseline model uh, as well as the CRF. And it also exceeds uh, fairly good for some of the different uh, data sets, such as Ecuador earthquake or or uh, like even the Hurricane Dorian. So but, uh, based on the different training data that we had uh, uh, of each of the individual disaster, the model performed uh, better. Uh, one of the key thing was we tried to combine the entire data set uh, so just the model has a better corpus to learn uh, rather than having the individual uh, different data sets and trying to fine tune the model uh, for each different data set. Uh, just on an average score, we can say like uh, our current model, the debugger based model uh, has an average score, uh, F1 score of around 0 0.90, while the base BERT has around 0 0.889 by the CRF model, which, uh, which tends to perform better for the NER tax has a F1 score of 0 0.864. Uh, some of the key learnings that we learned, uh, transfer learning can be of a great extent and be effectively used for in NLB problems such as entity recognition, question answering, and take summarization. Uh, Flare is a great and easy to uh, use framework. It uh, basically provides a very good opportunity for the users to change the architecture depending on the different parameters rather than uh, coding the entire, enti the entire model. Uh, it also is very compatible with the hugging face. So we can use a lot of different varieties of the pre trained models and try to fine tune a, a specific task. Uh, the CRF, one of the key things that we learned would be the CRF related the Viterbi loss function uh, outperforms the uh, 
can be outperformed by using a cross entropy if the weights are provided. So that's one of the things that we tried to do different uh, was we provided a weights for all of the labels. And then uh, the, the loss function was optimized uh, depending on the weights of the labels. Uh, one of the key things that we wanted to actually do was uh, we wanted to use a, a, a method called ACE, which has been released recently uh, by Alibaba. Uh, it, it, has a, it has a proper GitHub repo for it as well called automatic concatenation of the embeddings. So basically the Flare frameworks uh, allows the user to combine different types of contextual as well as the word embeddings. So uh, as, per the, uh, as per the research of the, uh, of the ACE paper, it is generally said that if we if we can combine uh, different contextual as well as word embedding such as glove, uh, word to wake as well as some uh, bot or debata embeddings, it would uh, help the model to better understand uh, the contextual information of the sentence. Uh, further, the model can be even uh, fine tuned by exploring different hyperparameters such as adding an RNN layer uh, before the after the sentence is embedding. Uh, the subtoken cooling layer can be further explored uh, and fine tuning the learning rate uh, depending upon the compute that is uh, that the user has. Uh, thank you. That would be from my side and team patterns. I thank you very much, uh, uh, Pratamesh, and I, I thank uh, all the all the members of uh, the patterns team for your excellent work and also for the excellent. Uh, presentations that, that was uh, delivered. I would like now to invite uh, the gate ID representative. I think that will be Amit and uh, Raghav, if I spelled your name correctly. If you can switch on your, your camera. Hello. 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 Hello, sir. And uh, I like to thank everyone to present my solution. And uh, especially, I like to thank uh, to ITU to uh, allow us to part in such a great uh, uh, knowledge gaining uh, competition. So, here yeah, I am starting my presentation. So. I'm uh, presenting. Uh, I'm presenting on my team uh, on the behalf of my team, Gate ID, uh, from UCSD Corporation, and uh, including members, Mr. Raghav Sharma, who is uh, and master, who has a master's degree from IIT, and Mr. Rohit Pandey. Who are... We we are not seeing your display. Sorry. Is it visible? It's get yeah, it's beginning. Let, let's just wait for a second. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Let's go on, thank you. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Rohit Pandey, who has done PhD from IIT, and Mr. Yatin Tom, Mr. Yatin Tom, who has graduated in BTEC. And we are the team who works on AI from past, uh, past uh, many years, and uh, we are providing real time solution to the other companies. And uh, uh, we are living in a world, uh, world where uh, accidents like natural disaster and calamities often happen somewhere in the world. And in the era of uh, social media, uh, uh, people uh, write about them instantly over their blogs. So if a system uh, that can extract the information from these blogs uh, and uh, these blogs, then we can uh, make a uh, make a uh, ma we can generate real time. Uh, we can generate real time uh, uh, notification uh, or alerts uh, alerts from them, and uh, so our uh, disaster management uh, agencies and other agencies can respond better, and uh, we can make our world much safer place uh, uh, for us. So uh, while uh, working on our uh, 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 our solution. We assume uh, we assume that uh, that we uh, uh, we just find out a word where, which uh, clearly signify a uh, location. So as this is as this is in the first context, the word California uh, clearly signify a single word from a text. So what we did is we just uh, 
uh, uh, so we uh, we we assume that we should uh, work just only to uh, we uh, create a binary uh, classifier uh, that can uh, clearly uh, clearly classify this word from the rest of the world but when we start debugging uh, when we start uh, more analyzing the data we find out the kind of uh, kind of scenario like this where the three words including uh, uci medical center the three words combining uh, giving uh, giving the information uh, giving the most important information regarding the location which is uh, which is uh, like uh, exactly uh, what place the thing is going on and if we see the uh, this context uh, in this the, in the preposition and the word orange and comma and the notation of california ca joining these things giving the information that the orange word is the location otherwise uh, if we just, just see the word uh, orange is just a location is a, just a fruit so uh, what we uh, what do you observe from there that we also need to work on word to word and word to word relationship and also we need to learn about the sentence sentence structure so that we can clearly confirm that the uh, that we are not missing any uh, location from the text so while working on our assumption we face a few, uh, we face uh, some challenges which is uh, uh, insufficient data that uh, there is no available uh, data set that can carry or that can carry all the location all over the world and uh, we when when we are uh, when we are researching on data sets uh, we find out there is a there is a, a lots of variation between the uh, benchmark data set that some uh, data sets are uh, based on uh, social media blogs some are uh, based on uh, news uh, uh, news headlines and also uh, we find out there is a non uniformity in the structure uh, structure of the sentence uh, such as uh, uh, the the data sets who are based on uh, which are based on uh, 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 social media blogs they also have uh, some misspelled uh, uh, misspelled words uh, that uh, clearly uh, you know uh, not inter interpreting the meaning of the sentence and uh, also um, there are some uh, data set who have a very short uh, short sentences so uh, so while we are focusing on our assumption we find out that our data set always be uh, unbalanced as such that if we see in this example word 1 and word 3 are the only two words which signify a uh, uh, location and the rest and uh, labeled as the one and rest of the words uh, doesn't signify any location and they are labeled as zero so uh, while in whole our training uh, our model is always biased towards the majority class which is zero so the learning is always low so keeping these things in mind we proposed our uh, model which is based on uh, rnn encoder decoder model uh, which gets the input after pre processing uh, after pre processing of the embeddings and we used the python based library pytorch in all, in our whole of the project and we used pretrain embedding to tackle the problem of the uh, insufficient data and we use uh, given data set idris only for the uh, training of our model and uh, we use binary cross entropy with logic loss function to tackle the problem of uh, the unbalanced data set as uh, uh, we use weights to uh, to uh, balance the uh, balance the minority and the majority class and we use reduced learning rate at every 20 steps uh, every 20 steps so that our model can uh, learn the deeper insight from the sentence and also we use bert optimizer for as a uh, as a uh, model optimizer so if we look in the in our results so here it's clear that uh, our model gate id performed well from the model uh, gpne by uh, gpne and uh, if we if we see our precision if we see, see the uh, precision class uh, uh, precisions of our model. So, in some uh, in some instances, our model perform uh, well than the model CRF and the BERT. It is clearly seen in the graph. And uh, uh, while analyzing the results, we uh, analyzed that uh, we our model has a low recall uh, uh, low recall problem. And this is because. Uh, our, our data set haven't considered some sublocations, but our model predicts because our model works on the sentence structure, not uh, not on the uh, labels given in the uh, uh, not uh, solely based on the labels given the data set. And uh, our model considers special character as a word, especially if it provides near about uh, the uh, near about the locations. Uh, as I uh, already. Uh, uh, given the example of the orange, the, after the orange word, there's a, a comma and then the uh, then the notation C. So uh, 
uh, the comma also consider as a location part and so uh, so it while uh, uh, predicting the prediction the uh, it also comes out the uh, comes out with the uh, comma as a location so uh, sometime uh, in some case in some cases uh, model uh, also consider some uh, sp similar spelling word as a similar words uh, such as the us is for us and us also uh, the notation for the united states but model consider both of the us as a location so uh, our learning while our all over the experiment is that we learn about the part of speech handling and how to use them to get the desired information from the text uh, suppose we are focusing much or much on some particular information that has been known so we are using the part of speech in a way that we can uh, get the information on at the priority and uh, we used uh, about we use uh, we learn about the pre-trained embeddings from different different models and we also uh, learn how they how this they, how their behavior in the knowledge in the terms of knowledge extraction and how they differently behave while we extracting information from them and we also learn the some sequential moda uh, mo some sequential uh, uh, mod models that works so that uh, that experimented on the textual uh, textual data like lstm rnn bert attention model and also their further development to learn their behavior over the sequential data and to uh, and also how uh, they are uh, uh, they are using these uh, using informations uh, from the uh, from the given uh, uh, from the uh, from from the given text and their embeddings so our future plan is to uh, extract some more uh, important information uh, from the text and uh, uh, from the text and we like to extract uh, some information from various platforms and provide the real time alerts of them and uh, we also planning to uh, embed our uh, model with the google's jdl project to extract real time information from the current news thanks 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 for the opportunity to uh, to speak in front of all of you thank you Thank you very much, uh, Amit, uh, and I wish to thank also all the members of the team, uh, Kate ID, for for this uh, uh, for your involvement and for this very interesting uh, presentation. Thank you. I'd, I'd like now to invite uh, the last team to uh, present, uh, which is the Ingenuity team. I think that we have. Uh, and Abuya, if you can switch on. Uh... Hello. Okay. Hello, hi, hi. Hi, thank you, let me just share my screen. Yeah, I thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, congratulations for having been able to su submit a solution uh, in a such uh, short amount of time. Thank you. Yeah, you are muted now, and then uh, you need to share your screen. And we are there. Excellent. I see. Please confirm if you can see my screen. Yes, everything is fine now. You can just uh, begin your, your presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. So. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present our solution and this very wonderful event. And um, yeah. So let me take this opportunity to present the solution we just created in the last uh, three to four days uh, with my team here uh, from the Tanzania Indaba X. So I'm going to start. Right. Oh, sorry. Right. So, all right. So I'm going to uh, pass through these. Uh, a few uh, contents, introduction, problem methodology, 
resolution in the roads and the way forward. Yeah, so uh, this is the team behind the solution that was created in the last three days. Uh, we are fourth year, uh, fourth year students in the University of Dodoma, Tanzania, taking a Bachelor of Science in Software Engineering. Uh, my colleague, Bright Agustino, uh, Innocent Charles, and me speaking, Dabuya Sengai Didia. So, as you can see, we are all uh, uh, AI and machine learning practitioners uh, with other expertise as well. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to take the opportunity to thank Dr. Matogoro for being uh, 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 our mentor in the last few days uh, for making sure this thing uh, worked well. Right, so motivation for participating in this uh, challenge is uh, we, we saw this as a chance to work on a very challenging problem that has a real world application. So also, but uh, we, we, we saw this as a, it's a potential for us to gain recognition and advance our careers by demonstrating our expertise. All right, so, so what was the problem we're solving? Uh, so uh, during disasters, uh, Twitter messages carry uh, critical information which can be helpful, helpful in various ways. So how do we get the, uh, the locations from the tweets uh, of where the disasters are happening? So the objective then was to develop an uh, automated system uh, that can be able to extract information from a stream of tweets uh, automatically, and then uh, uh, authorities, uh, relevant authorities can, can, pro can provide relief activities. Yeah, so that was the objective. Uh, and diagrammatically, this is like uh, a stream of tweets. And then this is the uh, picture representation of what was supposed to be developed. This is the location mention recognition system. Then we can get the location mentions. So this has to be automatically because uh, extracting locations from uh, a stream of tweets uh, manually, which uh, is very, very impractical. Yeah, so what was the methodology for us in approaching the problem? Uh, so we opted for this Python library, Spacey NLP, uh, where we utilize the Spacey NLP talk to vec and AR pipeline to build our model, uh, which actually required us to uh, you know, process the data in a spacey format, spacey binary format. So we use the GC data set, uh, Road Random JSON, which is in JSON format, of course, which totaled to around 13,000 tweets. But we want to use, we weren't able to use all of them yet. Uh, to time, uh, we kind of used like 5,000. Yeah, so that's, that's the highlight of the implementation detail. Yeah, so let me show you the architecture of uh, uh, the solution we developed. So uh, we had three main steps, uh, preparation, data preparation and preprocessing, whereby we extracted the data, the EGC data set that was uh, in GitHub. So we uh, selected what we wanted, which was the tweets and the location mentioned from the JSON data. Then we use click on spacey to serialize and create a spacey binary data set, which is the data set type that's required uh, in our space to vec and our pipeline. So the uh, in the talk to vec and our pipeline, uh, we used uh, the CPU, uh, we used to, due to time and resources and uh, stuff like that, we just use the CPU. So that's why you're not seeing a transformer here. We just use this Dr. Vec and AI pipeline, which uh, utilizes the transition-based parser as the core of the architecture, then embeds using multi-hash embed. Uh, then it, it encodes using the max out window encoder. Then from that, we get the trained model, which we also opted to use first API. This is just another Python library uh, to develop a simple web interface uh, for testing the how the, uh, the model performs or how it gives out results, which we then uh, wrapped it into a Docker image, then uh, pushed to Docker Hub. So that's uh, the overview of the architecture. So what was the results we obtained from this? Um, 
So this is the comparison of the, uh, the from the typeless uh, uh, from the typeless data. Uh, so it, this is this chart compares our model to the CRF model that was given by the uh, the organizers. So this is uh, performance of the F1 scores per event. So you can see, uh, yes, we just took like three to four days to develop the solution. So it's not enough time for such kind of a problem, but uh, we managed to make it uh, tangible in a way that it outperformed the CRF model in some of the events. But we can see, uh, yes, in some of the events and some not so much. For instance, the uh, the uh, Hurricane Florence, where we had a very low F1 score. Uh, but this is after doing a quick check, we just realized that we didn't have enough data on this particular event. But as you can see, events like Ecuador earthquake, we had a very good performance. We outsmarted the uh, we outperformed the CRF model, and a few others like the Midwest and US floods, and so forth. So as you can see, this is just scaled from 0 0.5 to uh, one uh, F1 scores. Yeah. So the overall performance, this is uh, showing the precision recall and F1 scores uh, for these two models, our model and the transformer. So you can see, we just managed to get the 0.832 uh, as F1 score for um, our model in just these three days. We didn't do a lot of uh, model tuning, uh, pre-processing, augmentation, stuff like that, but we managed to get this kind of score, which is actually a good start. Uh, so I believe we can do even uh, uh, better uh, in, in just a few, uh, few more days. Yeah, so what's the way forward? Increase the model performance with various techniques. Uh, one of them being text augmentation. This is one a very good uh, way to uh, increase the performance. We just didn't uh, get time to use it. Uh, also, model fine tuning. Uh, we also plan to use uh, different uh, model tuning uh, techniques so that uh, you know we can increase the model's performance. Just needed time. Yeah. So I think that's all. Uh, thank you. I thank you very much, Nabui uh, and uh, all the, the members of your team. It's, uh, yeah. it's impressive to see actually a solution that is de developed in uh, such a short amount of time. Now it is the moment to uh, announce the winners. So I see that Rim is there. So I, uh, we will uh, announce the winner and uh, Reem also will, will say actually a few words on the, on the reasons why a given team got a given award. So I, I give the floor to uh, Reem, which is showing, uh, now I see the number of submissions. Well, thanks, Sanjay. Yeah, let's sum up first before we look at the results. That in this challenge, we've got 24 teams registered, four of them managed to submit, and we were so glad to see uh, the presentations and learn a lot from them. Uh, four of them submitted to our challenge and one to the uh, Indaba X uh, Tanzania. So uh, just to sum up. So we have uh, two solutions that adopted NER models. Uh, the Baton team uh, adopted the FLAIR uh, NER model. The Ingenuity team from Indabax uh, uh, used the SPECI uh, model. Uh, the other remaining team tra trained deep learning models. Just I need to, to note this, the NER models are actually deep learning models. So the remaining teams, uh, the Gate ID, trained the uh, LSTM network, the text mining and cool nerd trained the uh, uh, transformer uh, models, Roberta and Bert. Uh, we noticed no teams use gazetteers to increase the accuracy of their predictions, but this is uh, uh, good for the efficiency of their solutions. 
for the training data, all teams use our data set, a GC data set, and no one use external uh, training data set. Now, looking at the results to compare all teams uh, against the baselines, and uh, yeah, you can see that uh, two teams, the pattern and the text mining teams, uh, outperform the BERT baseline, which is a very competitive baseline. Uh, the uh, engineering team outperformed the condition at random field on average across all the disaster uh, events. Uh, the remaining teams did not make it uh, to outperform any of the baselines. Uh, we consider three teams from uh, uh, our challenge uh, for the ranking, the final ranking, and uh, for the prizes. Uh, the teams that managed to submit uh, before the deadline, including the patterns, the text mining, and the, uh, uh, the gate uh, ID teams. And to announce the results, I'll leave the floor to them. Thank you very much, Rim. Now is the is the time to give the award. So uh, I just would li like to ask uh, my colleague Tomas uh, if he if he has managed to find the drum roll to to make some uh, atmosphere, or we can just. Uh, Unfortunately, show. it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I'll share my screen for the or or uh, Rim. You, if if you have the awards, maybe you you also want to do it, or or I can do it. You can. You can. Huh? You can. Okay. You can. I'm, I'm gonna do it. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> share screen. Okay. So. So, roll, drum roll, the first prize goes to the team patterns. If you can, maybe if, if you can also switch on your camera and uh, so you, you receive uh, the pattern, the, the certification, <laughs> the team patterns, and you receive also a check of uh, $1,000. Now, uh, uh, Rimi, you, you want to say something about the per performance of the team? Or it's, it's the one who, who had the, the highest score? Exceeding this competitive baseline is something great. So uh, we are very glad that you managed to do that. Uh, Hoping that you will find that will, will join us in the next year in the second version of this challenge uh, once we uh, uh, we organize it. Thank you very much. And then now the second team is the statistics mining. So I wish to congratulate. Uh, and you will receive also a check of uh, five thousand five hundred, sorry, five hundred dollars or Swiss francs. Uh, can I ask my co colleague in which, which is the currency in which we allocate these? Uh, so this we allocate uh, Swiss francs, but of course, the, depending on them, what currency they want to receive the money, but it will be five hundred francs. Right, yeah. and, and then uh, all, all of you will receive uh, a certificate. Uh, we, uh, we will just show here the name of the team, but you will receive a certificate with your name as well. And now the third uh, prize for, the com for this competition is to the team uh, Get ID. Congratulations also to you, and you also will receive uh, uh, a prize of uh, uh, 200 Swiss francs. I, th thank I thank you very much. Thank I you, mean, thank you so uh, much. Okay, congratulations. Now we have, uh, we had also these other uh, 
competitions which uh, happened uh, very much uh, re recently and it had uh, a separate uh, prize. So for the team uh, Ingenuity, which was able to submit a valid solution in a such uh, short amount of time. My co co congratulations, I, I give congratulations for your achievement uh, and Thomas, uh, we also allocate uh, a, a money prize as well, right? So for this. Yes, so this team has a special prize. Uh, it's 500 Swiss franc, which is equivalent to 500 US dollars. So congratulations, uh, everyone from uh, Ingenuity. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then we have also a certification to the team Cool Nerds that submitted the solution, but unfortunately was uh, after the deadline expires. But it was also a valid uh, solution. So also congratulations to you as well. So I, I think that uh, with this, we, we end up the awards uh, ceremony. If, if, if I can ask uh, all of you to switch on the camera so that uh, we can see each other, I can stop my sharing of the screen now. So we re really hope that, that you have enjoyed the, the competition. Uh, I see also Lokendra, Lolo Kendra, who is, has been cooperating with the uh, uh, RIM and the institution from Qatar. <laughs> right, here we are finally, the big applause to all of you. It was a pleasure to have you participate in the, in the competition. We, we intend to organize uh, another competition uh, next year. Um, not only for the for the lo location um, uh, mention recognition, where we hope that uh, uh, RIM and the institution from uh, uh, Qatar and uh, Lokendra would would uh, like to be involved again. We are um, organizing also other uh, competitions in uh, GOAI. In fact. Uh, uh, Friday next week, we will have also the finale event for the uh, competition on uh, crop uh, mapping, which was organized uh, in cooperation with the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and uh, within the, the frame of the United Nations Open uh, GIS initiatives. So uh, it, would be, it would be excellent to have you uh, participate in the competition uh, next year. And uh, I, I give the floor to, to Thomas uh, and uh, Rim uh, if they want to say something. And, and, and of course, uh, all of you, the, the, the participants, uh, I, I, I'll give you the floor if you, if you want to say uh, something. We have still uh, five minutes of uh, allocated time. Thank you very much. Who? So maybe the, the winners, uh, you guys, you can start and say maybe one or two words and yeah, and then I'll pass the floor to Rim. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, ITU events, as well as the geo for ai uh, It has been really a great experience for all of us. Uh, being master student, it was really a challenging task for all of us, uh, but we have learned a lot uh, from transformer-based models to actually taking a model out of your regular studies and actually trying to implement to a real world problem and to actually solve it. It's a all a different case, but it was a great experience for all of us. And surely we are looking forward to taking participation in the next year competition as well. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Remy, you, you want to say something for... Yeah, just want to thank you for the organization. And I want to 
uh, congratulate the the first team. So well done. And uh, yeah, and uh, the work from Tanzania was very good. And uh, I think uh, you had to work all together to build the uh, final solution like that. So congratulations to you too. Thank you. Now maybe Amit for the Get ID would say something. Yeah. Um, thanks, uh, and I congratulate everyone uh, to be a part of uh, such kind of such a great uh, event, and uh, also be part of something uh, which really be a great cause for the humanity. If such kind of application be really uh, be practical in the real world. So uh, thanks, thanks. That's that's it for my side. Uh, thanks everyone. Uh, and congratulations to all the teams. And thank you, Amit, uh, to represent us. And it's, uh, it's a very good experience for us to learn about the NLP. Uh, and uh, we have learned a lot uh, about the NLP, about the embedding and all the things. So, yeah. And we are looking forward to join other, another competition from IIT. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nabui? We cannot hear you. You seem muted now. We cannot hear you also now. Maybe you, you need to switch on the volume. Uh, increase the volume, maybe. You are muted now. How about now? Yes. All right. Okay. I just wanted to congratulate every team. Uh, it wasn't an easy competition, actually. And a uh, special thanks to Alta Thomas and Dr. Reem for their support. They were very active in answering any inquiries that we presented on, you know, so that we can go away with the competition. Uh, big up to them. Uh, see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rim. Yeah. Thank you for everyone for participating. Uh, we hope to see you inshallah next year. And we hope to see more women maybe because I noticed I'm the only woman here. So yeah, so if you know so anyone around you, women, just encourage them to participate and show up in such events. Yeah, thank you so much. I thank you very much. Uh, now I, I want to give the, the word uh, against the floor to, uh, to Thomas. So you, you have been uh, uh, running for uh, a few years uh, machine learning and 5G competitions. And then we are uh, initiating now a new competition with the uh, GOI. And it seems that, that, that we had a, a lot of interest uh, around this location mention uh, recognition. So how do, do you see the, the evolution of the competition? Well, it's been quite an interesting uh, way that this challenge was uh, put out because the baseline, as you can see, was <laughs> really high. Like the F1 score was about 0 0.9, 0 0.8 something, which is almost 0 0.9, which is very, very difficult to beat. So to get these kind of uh, submissions, I think it's uh, kind of nice to see the quality of work and the amount of work that has gone into it. And of course, I would be happy to see Rima again next year to host the next iteration of the challenge and to see where this thing goes. I, I understand, for example, I worked quite closely with the team from Tanzania just a few for a few days, but they managed to put out even a demo, which you can, which I believe they can host in the future which you can try, you put in a tweet and it can give you the location mentions, which is quite interesting where you can see how these applications can, can have an impact in the world. So I'm happy to see everyone who have put in work. Uh, of course, also I'd like to invite you to publish your work. We have the ITU Journal for Future and Evolving Technologies. You can publish it there, or of course, if you have special uh, maybe outlets that you would like to publish your work, it would be nice to see this work published in some way or form. So good luck, everyone. 
and thank you very much for being part of this competition. Thank you. I thank you very much. And now is really the time to say goodbye to all of you. And I want to uh, thank also the audience uh, which have uh, attended the uh, event. And uh, I see you around uh, in the competition around the uh, IT activities. I thank you very much. Uh, and have a nice evening all. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you for participating in today's AI for Good session. We hope you've learned something new, innovative, and engaging in today's event. We now encourage you to continue the conversation on the live video wall in the neural network. Here you can ask questions, like and comment, share links, complete the poll, connect with interesting profiles, or speak one-on-one -on -one using the chat and video function. We invite you to explore the lobby, try the smart matching quiz, visit the virtual exhibits, poster boards, the eShop, and build your personalized AI for Good program. Let's shape the future of AI for Good. Thank <laughs> you.